Hi everyone and welcome to ATB TV and today we're going to take you through the process of buying into a guitar and hopefully answer some of the questions that we often get asked by customers, especially first time buyers. Well, you buy a vintage guitar because you want to play a vintage guitar. It's an aspirational uh, thing for most players to be able to have access to these sort of iconic instruments that we've all read about in magazines. It's also that it feels different, you know, the, the feel of the lacquer and the, the way that the guitar reacts is different. It is different to the way the modern one reacts and you can't really replicate that with whatever technology you want to throw at it. So you're always, you're always going to end up eventually uh, if that's what you want, be buying a vintage guitar. Fender or Gibson Custom Shops provide you with access to anything you want. And if you're not in the position to be able to afford, you know, the, the top dollar, you know, bursts and things, then this is your only way of accessing these guitars. But with a vintage guitar, it's, it's more than uh, buying a guitar. You're buying into the experience and uh, the history of that instrument and, and having that tangible connection to uh, the, the whole arc of the history of the electric guitar. So when you buy a vintage guitar, you don't just pay your money, hand it over and you get a piece of wood with some strings on. When you buy a vintage guitar, you're buying with all your senses. You buy with your sense of feel, you buying with your eyes, the way it looks, you buy with your nose, the way it smells, the way the lacquer feels, and obviously using your ears, the way it sounds, and using your fingers, the way it feels and plays. So it's not just a question of handing your money over and getting an instrument. You're buying into everything, every single part of it, which utilizes all your senses. Another good reason to buy a vintage guitar is they are usually very, very good investments. We have had many guitars here which we've bought back off our customers two years or more later and we've paid them the money that we've sold them to after two years and still been able to sell it at a profit. They're not shooting up in value as they did during the uh, boom years of 2007-2008. They're creeping up gradually these days and for most people who are not earning interest in their savings account it's actually a very good investment. For a lot of people who buy them as an investment, uh, it's an investment that they can enjoy as opposed to having money in the bank, which is not necessarily that enjoyable, really. And because of this, we're seeing an increased demand in certain types of these guitars, and it's not going to decrease, in our opinion. So we're finding difficulty finding the stock rather than selling them. Comes to the right place. Uh, the first consideration, uh, unfortunately, is how much money do I have to spend? Uh, because that really dictates what you can hope to achieve. So, for that, we're going to hand you over to Mike. Okay, so this is a question we are constantly asked. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down different price bands and tell you what we think are good investments at the moment for both Gibson and Fender, which are basically the only two guitars we sell here. Well, for under five grand, I would recommend, from the Gibson camp, I would recommend you go for something like a 60s ES330, or for that budget, you can also get a very nice 50s Gibson ES225, which is the forerunner of the ES330. Solid body wise, Gibson, you can get into the SG Juniors or you could get a more players grade Les Paul Junior, which are very, very popular at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the players grade are basically vintage guitars with issues which makes them more affordable. Common issues with um, players grade guitars are things like headstock repairs, uh, refinishes, especially when it comes to Fender, and other minor items, occasionally a route under the pick guard. The, the, this is what players grade is defined as, guitars which aren't mint and aren't genuine investment quality. Okay, for under £5,000 in the Fender range, I would suggest you have a look at the um, 50s Music Masters. They're, they are showing very good strong gains at the moment and they're doing extremely well. Other under £5,000 guitars you can get are Jaguars from the 60s. You would get a, just about get a pre-CBS Jagu Jaguar. Um, you could also get a later 60s Jazz Master in the offset line, which are all very, very good guitars and have over recent years shown very good gains as well. Okay, so below 10 grand, well, the rising star in that category is the Gibson Les Paul Junior from 1954 through to 1961. These have shown incredibly strong gains over the last five years and good examples will now cost you around seven or eight thousand pounds whereas a few years ago you could pick them up for a lot less than that. The other uh, Gibson solid bodies I'd recommend would be you would just about get into a 69 Les Paul standard gold top which was the first reissue of the Les Pauls made in the late 60s. You could also get uh, SG, a very nice SG special, or you could get a custom colour SG special as well. Those are showing very strong gains in the Gibson line. Under 10,000 for Fender, then I would suggest that you look at mid 60s Telecasters. They're very good value for money at the moment, and in my opinion, underpriced. They will show very strong gains in the future, in my opinion, just like the early 60s ones have. So I define mid-60s as being a transitional logo telecasters um, made from 1965 to 1967. And the ones with maple cap necks are especially desirable as well. Other fenders under 10,000, if you're lucky, you will get a refinished Stratocaster uh, a pre-CBS Stratocaster for that price, if you're lucky. They generally go for a little bit more because again, they've shown some good gains recently. Um, and under 10,000, you'll get yourself a really good Jaguar, custom color. That's when you start to go into the custom color um, category. And you can also get a decent Jazzmaster as well for that price. A pre-CBS Jazzmaster will get you in at under 10K. Yes, for under 10k you can get some very good arch tops ranging anywhere from um, L, um, L5s. You can get really nice L5s for that price. Um, you can get ES300s, ES350s. Um, you can get an ES5 from the 50s for that price. You can't get one of humbuckers, but you can certainly get a very nice example with P90s, late 50s or mid 50s for that sort of price. And they are very good, nice and beautiful guitars as well. Nice guitars to play and own. Okay, so this category, under 20K, is when things start to get really interesting in the vintage market. And if you're considering doing this seriously, then this is a price point where you should ideally aim at, because you start to get into the realm of all sorts of very, very nice items for under between 10 and 20k. For example, in the Gibson field, you will get a, a nice 335, a lovely 335 for that. Um, a early, early to mid 60s one, and you'd, you'd get a Clapton spec 64 with a stop tail cherry red for an under 20k as well. You would also get um, a nice SG for that price, an SG Les Paul standard from the early 60s that comes in that price band and they have shown good gains recently. You get a, a 68 uh, gold top, a really nice 68 gold top you could get for that and again 
they, they have been very, very good. You would just about get coming in just around the 20k mark, um, a 50s gold top or maybe a 50s Les Paul Custom, one which may have minor issues like um, a refret. Now, people have asked us about refrets. The general rule of thumb is if the guitar is mint under the bed and a total collectible museum piece, then yes, a refret will impact the value quite a bit. But for a guitar which has been used, which has been played, then it's, it's part of its history, it's part of its life. It's akin to some way of changing tyres on a car. You can't expect to buy a car which has the, the tyres it was sold from, from new. And if, like a car is going to be driven, guitar is going to be played, then the frets will eventually wear out. So collectors appreciate this, and unless they're looking for dead mint under the bed items, then they will, they will generally do not mind a refret. It will impact the value a little bit, but not as much as you might think. Fender wise for under 20k, you, you will get pre CBS straps, which is what everyone wants. You will get some nice pre CBS straps, but you won't get the mint ones for that price. You will get uh, a good um, played pre CBS Fender strap for under 20k, and you will get 60s tellies as well. You'll start to get into the realm of pre CBS tellies, which have been very, very popular. And um, unlike strats, in the pre-CBS era, tellies from the early 60s are actually relatively rare. Um, for under 20k in Fender line, you will get custom coloured Jazzmasters. Again, you can start to encroach upon the custom colour territory if you look towards the offset field rather than the more standard straps and tellies. And you'll get some nice custom colour Jazzmasters for, for that price. As you will, you'll get some very exotic colour Jaguars as well. Okay, well 20k plus will get you some serious vintage kit. From the Gibson stable, you will get um, dot neck ES335s. You can get yourself uh, a 50s Esbel girl top. Um, the ones with the wraparound bridge, they generally start from the lower 20s. The ones with a tunematic bridge, they generally start from the lower 30s. Um, if you want to go up from there, if you want a gold top with humbuckers, then you'd be looking more in the 70 to 100,000 range. Uh, you would also get some uh, Les Paul Customs. The Alnico P91s will be in the lower 20s. If you wanted to three pick up um, humbucker customs from 1957 through to 1961, you'd be looking over 30 for those and upwards to 50. Also in that category, you've obviously got the bursts. Now, the bursts uh, probably require a whole video by themselves, but you, you would be looking at spending at least £150,000 on a burst. You can go way up to over half a million for just a guitar, which is a normal Gibson guitar without any artist problems to attach to it. You can also, in that price range, you can start to look at more unusual guitars which Gibson have produced. The rarer guitars like the, um, the blonde ES335s, the blonde ES345s, these again will start from around 50,000 and go upwards. Or you can look for some special order guitars, you occasionally see some cherry red 50s guitars. These again will, will, will work their way up into the 20s and higher. But generally, in this, in this category with Gibson, you can go as high as you want to, with as much money as you have or want to spend. However, if you really have won the lottery and you really want to blow it on a nice vintage guitar, then you want to be looking at Carina instruments made from 1958 through to 1960. The Carina Vs and the Carina Explorers. Carina Vs will set you back at least 300 500, 500,000 and Carina Explorers you could almost be looking almost a million for that for those if you can find one because there are only a handful of those made. Those are probably the rarest guitars, the rarest standard production guitars out there at the moment and if you have that money to spend on one of those then you know, come and see me. So with Fenders you get into the really nice category of custom colours and there's quite a selection out there. 
you, for the just over 20, 20 to 30-ish, you'll get the more common custom colours like candy apple red, Olympic white. You'll get a Strat between 20 and 30 for that sort of price range. Then you start to go up a bit more. In the 30s, you're going to get the Lake Placid Blues and you can go up into the more rarer custom colours like the Burgundy Mist. Those will set you back around 60, 70,000 even. Uh, you will get shoreline gold in the middle of that range and if you really look for something like a shell pink then who knows what you would pay in this day and age. But basically 20 grand plus will get you into the custom colour category. Now you do have to be very careful when you look for custom colour fenders. There are a ton of fakes out there so you have to know what you're looking for or you have to buy from someone who's willing to stand by what they sell you and guarantee its authenticity as much as they can, of course. But it's very, very important when you're spending that sort of money to look for someone who will provide that service for you. Otherwise, there are stories of people who have been ripped off all over the internet and it's not something we would want to happen to you. Going back to Fenders, you will get into the Blackguard territory. Now blackguards are very, very desirable, they have shown very strong gains and a blackguard would set you back 30 grand plus up to maybe about 100,000 for a really nice broadcaster. But blackguards are very popular right now and uh, we sold a few of them, uh, we just can't get enough of them but uh, that 20k plus will get you into blackguard territory. Also, 20k plus will get you into the territory of the 50s maple neck straps. Very nice examples of those you can get for 30k plus. It will also get you into probably one of the rarer straps, the Mary Kay, which is a blonde ash body with gold hardware. We, um, we've had a few of those and uh, they go for a lot of money these days. So if you have that sort of money and you want to spend it on the Fender, you're going to have a lot of fun. You'll be able to get some very, very cool guitars for that price. One thing I might say is um, today we are in 2020 and depending on when you're watching this video, prices may change, usually upwards, but they could go downwards. So take these prices with a little bit of pinch of salt if you're watching this video a few years in the future. <laughs> That's our guide to buying a vintage guitar. So, you know, you've saved up all your money, you've convinced the kids they don't need to go to university, and you've got all that stuff together. You need to make sure that you know exactly what you're looking at and that you buy from someone that you trust. And if you can, you know, come to a place like this and try them out because you might be surprised. You might come in looking for one thing but leave with a completely different guitar because they all speak to us in different ways. They all have their own little quirks and foibles that you don't get from a, from a brand new guitar that's plecked. They all play differently, they all sound different. They've all got their certain little things and, and it's, a, it's a really exciting experience to be able to help people achieve this goal of buying a vintage guitar. Uh, so I hope this video has helped. Make sure to, uh, to follow us here on, on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button. Uh, also follow us on all our various social media and come visit us whenever you can. Uh, we're always here to help. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.